From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. It's Thursday, October 13th, 2022. NPM timing attack could impact supply chain. Security researchers at Aqua Security found a way to determine which private packages are present in a GitHub repository. This uses the small time difference in returning a 404 error based on whether the package is private or simply not there. The caching mechanism of NPM's API appears to cause the timing difference. This can vary by a few hundred milliseconds. This opens the door for attackers to create malicious clones or typo-squatted versions of the packages. Ultimately, these clones could make their way into production software and then to consumers. Aqua contacted GitHub on March 8th. GitHub said it could not fix the issue, citing architectural limitations. Legit software used to spread malicious WhatsApp mod. Researchers at Kaspersky discovered a Trojan lurking in a modified WhatsApp build called Yo WhatsApp. This still provides a fully working app with a customized interface, but grants the Trojan access to full device permissions granted to WhatsApp. The researchers discovered the modified app is spread through several non-malicious apps. This includes ads in the app SnapTube and uploaded to the internal store of the video app VidMate. The Trojan can be used to take over an account or cause a user to unknowingly subscribe to services. Mango markets hit by a $100 million hack. The Solana blockchain trading platform certainly experienced an escalation on what happened in the attack. It said on the evening of October 11th, there was an incident with an attacker draining funds. By midday on the 12th, it said market manipulation allowed an attacker to drain about $100 million. Mango said this effectively resulted in a total draining of all equity available and paused withdrawing deposits. The attacker essentially staked out a large position on the blockchain, traded against themselves on other exchanges to inflate prices, and then made a Mango governance proposal on its DAO to waive any criminal investigation to it and not be made liable for any bad debts. It had the market power to vote on this with 99% yes votes. Microsoft adds security and collaboration features to Edge. Microsoft keeps adding features to its Chromium-based Edge browser, and this time, they're not for e-commerce. The browser will bring typo protection for website URLs, offering suggestions for commonly misspelled sites. This could potentially avoid typo squatting attacks. There is also a new opt-in feature, which will apply the browser's most conservative content settings when on an unfamiliar site. This would, for example, turn off just-in-time JavaScript compilation, among other precautions. Microsoft also added a preview for Edge workspaces, which lets team members share browser tabs. This will allow tabs to be updated in real time. And now thanks to this week's episode sponsor, No Name Security. Are you sure your APIs are secure? No Name Security discovers all the APIs running on your network and analyzes them to spot design flaws, misconfigurations, and vulnerabilities. You can even catalog sensitive data and quickly see how many APIs are able to access credit card data, phone numbers, social security numbers, and other sensitive PII data. Learn more at nonamesecurity.com slash posture dash management. First exemption from U.S. chip equipment ban. Earlier this month, the U.S. Commerce Department announced further export bans on advanced chip making equipment to China. This impacted technology up to a decade old and would have made manufacturing DRAM difficult in the country. The memory chip maker SK Hynix confirmed it received a one-year temporary exemption from the new U.S. rules. This will allow SK Hynix to supply its own China-based facilities without additional licensing requirements from the U.S. Commerce Department. It's expected for the U.S. to grant further exemptions to other DRAM makers like Samsung. Google begins passkey rollout. Google began rolling out support for passkeys to sign into sites and services. This will initially be available on Android for those in the Google Play Services beta and on Chrome Canary builds. Passkeys will require on-device authentication to use initially. Users can store them in the Google Password Manager. A stable launch will come later this year. Android will support passkeys from third-party credential managers in 2023. White House strategy light on cyber details. Since taking office, the Biden administration implemented a number of policy objectives and executive orders to shore up the nation's cybersecurity initiatives. So, with the release of its national cybersecurity strategy, it's a bit surprising to see a fairly sparse mention of cyber in the document. It only highlights the area specifically in a brief segment titled Securing Cyberspace and makes short references to it in relation to challenges presented by China and Russia. 
It does note that threat actors continue to target critical infrastructure and that the government remains at work with allies on standards to improve cyber resilience. Speaking about the document, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said not to look at it as a detailed accounting of every single challenge, but rather a broader brush at how the government hopes to advance American interests. Weak passwords still an issue in the cloud. According to Google Cloud's most recent Threat Horizons report, weak or no passwords were a factor in over 57% of cloud compromises in Q2. The report found that high levels of SSH activity indicates organizations are often using default or no credentials at all when spinning up an instance. The next most common factors, software issues and misconfigurations, accounted for 29.7% combined. Google observed threat groups starting crypto miners once obtaining access, but it notes that organizations should be more worried about threat actors leveraging access covertly down the line. Our security program is drifting from a prevention to a resilient strategy. If so, are you truly operating in a resilient environment? Or are you still acting in a prevention stance, but you know you should be resilient? That's what we'll be digging into on this week's episode of the Defense in Depth podcast. It just posted over at CISOseries.com. Head on over to check it out and subscribe to the show in your podcast app of choice. I'm Rich Straffolino, reporting for the CISO Series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.